Welcome to Ted's Tiny Trucks. Now, we've made some progress this weekend on the uh, WPL C34KM, or, well, that's a bit of a mouthful, we'll just stick to calling it the, uh, the Mini Toyota FJ40. It actually, it's gone together okay, if I'm honest. Um, I've got the chassis built. I haven't wired anything in yet, but the mechanical stuff is done. Uh, the wheels are actually out in the garage being painted at the moment. There's some nice parts in it. It's got metal drive shafts, you know, metal gear housings, things like that, brass gears. Actually, overall, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as I was expected. There are a couple of uh, frustrating parts, though, if I'm being honest. So one of the big problems is the mesh between the pinion and the crown gear. So on these particular axles, if you don't put a space or an insert between the pinion housing and the main diff housing, it just locks up solid. It just absolutely rams the pinion gear into the crown gear. So you can see the white line on the you know, between the two parts just here. It's just simply, it's a plastic card gasket designed to pull the diff housing away slightly and give us a bit of room between pinion and crown gear. It seems to work reasonably well. I had to do the same on the rear. And, you know, for a very, so my first extremely crude part, look like that so I'm pleased to say that the ones in it are slightly neater but it gives you a rough idea of what's in there so you've got four locating pegs on the pinion housing in fact you actually get four locating pegs on the diff cover as well you need to scrape the paint off those or else the thing will never go together and actually once you put the four bolts through and you've got with your pinion in there uh, with your gasket in there actually mesh is quite good I mean I've only got quarter of a mil and half mil plastic card so 10 and 20 thou I suspect in reality 15 thou would be okay I mean I took my half mil sanded it lightly both sides and I think that's given me roughly what I need so I think that's okay um, it can be a bit tight on bolt length so I mean there's there's bolts and screws scattered throughout the packets um, you get some duplicates you get some extras fortunately you get a couple of spares um, things like this steering arm here, I mean if you put it in with a recommended bolt you'd probably have maybe a mil, mil and a half of thread engagement in the steering arm which is no good. The saving grace is that you get some 14 mil long bolts which are duplicates of the ones to hold the diffs together. So you can just put one of those in, cut it short uh, and that deals with that problem. Uh, and I think there was, there was one other one as well. Oh yeah, the one for the steering was just crazy short. I mean it only went halfway through the steering arm and the steering arm itself isn't very thick. Uh, in terms of other bits, I've chopped 5 mil off the top of the springs because as it sat, it just sat way too high for my liking. Um, and you also get an awful lot of wheelbase change uh, on compression, basically because these are these are angled at probably what feels like 45 degrees at the moment. I'm not exactly in my first mock-ups are you know that extra 5 mil hasn't really changed the wheelbase enough for me to get too excited about it but we'll see how it goes. I mean, it does like to sit with a little bit of left-hand droop, um, and it did that with the standard springs. I'm not quite sure why, given that I'm gonna model it in a slightly dilapidated condition, I can't say I'm too upset with that. Uh, and it does amuse me that when you put it on the ground and you rock it side to side, you just, the axles are just flailing forwards and backwards. So it'll be an interesting drive, I'm sure. Uh, there is a front bumper to go on, but again, that's out in the garage being painted. So, I mean, essentially, that's, that is the chassis complete. The body shell, well, the good news is, is it scales out almost entirely at 112. I think if you measure the wheelbase, it came in at 112. If you measure it across the outside of the fenders, it came in at something like, you know, 11.7. So, we'll definitely call it 112, I think, uh, and work from there. A couple of bits to note, uh, the scuttle underneath the windscreen here was, we had a horrible bow on it. Um, I'll flash a photograph up here so that you can see the bow. The quick fix, or the bodge in my case really, is if you look on the underside you can see that there's this black, or this lip here. And this is part of a black plastic insert so that normally when you look through the grill here, You've got some black shading underneath. What I've done is just got some plastic card in there and basically used it to jemmy 
the scuttle straight up so that I've got, a, a, you know, a, a pretty good parallel line there. I'm quite happy with that. Um, the bonnet needs a bit of fettling, so it catches like an absolute bugger on this edge here. Um, so what I've done is I've smoothed that off as best as I can, and then I've chamfered behind the edge of that bonnet to make it that bonnet edge there to make it as thin as possible and now just about you know it doesn't look too bad from a, a panel gap perspective but you can lift it up and it barely catches I mean I'm sure with another coat of paint I might have to be a bit careful but that's pretty good in comparison to how it used to be um, the doors have all had a bit of a tweaking they didn't really sit too nicely so the back edges have been radiused and trimmed and sanded to suit and I've had to do that on both sides alas I've overshot a little bit on the driver's side and that's a bit loose so I'm wondering whether magnets or just gluing the damn thing shut will work so as you can see it's all had a first unifying coat of primer I did glue the back half of the body to the front so normally you just bolt it in using uh, these two screws here but that gives you some flex so basically I screwed it together bolted it on the chassis glued everything together and then I've just got a thin smear of filler down both sides sanded it shot it in primer and actually I can probably get away with it as it stands at the moment um, what else is there to talk about on this one I think that's probably it to be honest I haven't really got much further as you can say I've got see I've got everything else prep ready for paint it's just been a busy Sunday so what I shall do is I shall shoot out after I finish recording this and uh, get some more footage it is quite satisfying um, I'll be honest when I was putting the axles together sort of yesterday I was getting a bit frustrated with it really things didn't fit particularly well it took a couple of goes there was lots of faffing about and making the stuff and I was quite unimpressed with it as a whole thinking I should have just bought the plastic one gobbed it together and built it as a static model now I've got over that and I've got the chassis and what have you together yeah I think it will be alright I mean you know it does look fantastic uh, I mean I've just loosely popped the the roof on at the moment the key bit is that the lower edge of this rear um, body section actually fits into a moulded slot that runs around the edge right that's a tight fit so the reason for masking this off is to ensure that I can actually get the damn thing back on again I made the mistake already of if I pull this off so I've already primed the top half of the rear body section and as you can see I can barely get the roof back on again that's got uh, holes that you holes that slip over this to make it easy to get the screws through and give you a location uh, I'm already too tight on that so I should be scraping a bit of paint off that uh, and I remember to mask it before I put the top coat on still a bit undecided on top coat colours to be honest um, I quite like it now it's not blue I definitely wouldn't do yellow I'm sort of stuck between beige and green really um, I don't have a preference I think blaze would look quite nice it's a bit easier to go ratty on it and I've, you know as a confession I do own the RC four-wheel drive Toyota FJ40 which scales out about one in nine so it's a freaking it's a good size bigger than this and the plan is to put that one in green so I think in order to do this one different I think the I think the general consensus is pointing up beige um, I will use the two lights that go in it whether I motorize it and get it going oh, get it going to start with I don't know uh, I have spent a whole six pounds on a on an ESC for it um, I've probably got spare receiver from my Flysky GT3C I haven't got a battery pack that will fit in that space but the thing comes with a servo so I might have a go when it all, it's all mocked together and see whether I can squeeze everything in okay uh, at the moment windscreen is still folding down but by the time I've fixed everything together and glued it up, it will be okay. Interior wise, you do put some panels over the door here, uh, and the door did have four prongs on it. They didn't line up at all, um, so in the end, I've just chopped the bottom two off. Unfortunately, the plastic that it's made from seems to be impervious to any kind of glue I've got, so I can imagine that's going to be possibly just a hot glue just to hold the bottom of the doors in place. 
but other than that, uh, yes, satisfying at the moment. Uh, and for 60 quid, uh, to be fair, you can't really go wrong. Uh, you can't, you shouldn't moan too much. It's certainly better than I could scratch build for 60 quid with a working chassis. And in terms of time, I don't know, it's had a few hours on the body. I mean, there was really, you know, short of fixing a few minor rods and sods and then sanding the thing down. It hasn't really taken much, to be honest. Uh, wheels have gone together okay, because they're just plastic one-piece things with weights that go around the outside. Overall, really, not bad. I still think I'd probably been better off with a plastic one, so 30 quid. <laughs> Given that, you know, 95% of its time it is just going to be a static model, and dumped in weeds and probably on the back of an MC8. But it does give me the option to motorise with a hopefully improved longevity. But we'll see how we go. Okay, I think that will do for tonight. Thanks for watching.